What is good friends, we are back with more World Cup round 1 coverage. We get FLCL versus Snowy this time and we see FLCL bring an interesting Mega Sableye balance squad. At first when I looked at this team, I just I just looked at team preview, I haven't seen this replay yet. It feels like the Jirachi is either choice scarf or some... Like Jirachi is the only potential choice scarf unless it's Scarf Greninja. And it seems like... I could see him being Ash Greninja, like, his way of dealing with Volcarona is basically hoping that it, like, if it's the Psychic, it's a big threat, but otherwise, um, Toxapex, if it has a good amount of Spadev, it can easily deal with most Volcaronas that don't have a, um, Z Psychic, and if it's Ash Greninja, it can revenge with War Shuriken if he gets rocks up. He doesn't really have a ground with this, so his Sableye either has to be max defense to kind of check Zygarde, or he has to be, like, Fist Devlanders with leftovers, and Snowy brings a really cool... Um, bulky ovens are balanced, but yeah, he has like these breakers and when Indo King that you like Volturn kind of like I can see maybe if, if, if Mew could be Ice Beam, could, I could also see Volt Switch on his Mew because like Volt Switch on Rotom already to bring in the Nido King and bring in the Mega Mall. <clears throat> so at first, the, the, the Mega Sable Ali is so obvious because they all want protect to get off the Mega Evolution. And FLCL, his team is not weak to Hazard, but I can still understand why he has a Mega Sable because he doesn't have other Hazard control and Spikes would be super annoying to his team. So yeah, we will see. I'm pretty sure FLCL will lead off with Sable Eye. And Snowy does lead off with his Latios. And here, <coughs> this could be Specs Ladi. But I honestly think this is Scarf Ladios. But he might be bluffing like a Specs Ladi and forcing the Sableye to go for Protect. And this way he can bring out his Mawile. And Sableye loses his Prank Stability after Mega Evolving. He will either go for Knock Off or Protect here. There's no way he will Wisp on a Ladi. As he does just go for Protect. And he can just Mega Evolve his Mawile here and go for Player Off. As the Toxapex does come out. And this should eat it up pretty well. And this turn he can go. If I'm snowy, it's kinda tough because the Toxabex can still live with Thunder Punch and Fish for Skull Brune. So it's really risky to predict the landers here and go for player of. Um so I would probably just make the safe T punch play. As what does Evil CL do here? <coughs> Never mind. Snowy switches out into Rotom. And FLCL switches out into Landers predicting the Thunder Punch. Uh, I assume FLCL is going to switch out here, he needs this health here. And do we see Snowy making the aggressive Volt Switch play? He just he does just fire off a safe Hydro Pump. He can go for Volt Switch after, force the Sableye to go for Recover. And he can bring out his Mawile here. And he does just do that, because there was like no way you will always there. I mean he could have, but it would have been way too risky. As um, this time, I assume he's just going to go for Play Rough again. As he does go for player off, get some good damage on the Landris, and the Landris does reveal leftovers as to be expected. And Landris can go for Stealth Rock here, because tomorrow is probably not going to be staying in. And he has like um, two Levitating one Mons, one Ground Resist, so it was pretty safe, I feel, to go for Rocks there. But it's a little bit risky, but he kind of had to get up his Rocks there, because he go if he goes for Earthquake, lets the Rodon come in for free, kind of loses all the momentum. <coughs> and yeah, if I'm Snow here, I just click Volt Switch on the predicted Mega Sable. I or oh, even on the Toxapex, because Toxapex can eat up Volt Switch um, pretty decent, uh, pretty easily. As he does just do the Volt Switch play, and the smaller should come out here. <coughs> and he can play off or Thunder Punch here, depending on if he breaks the Toxapex or the Landris. As he goes for Sword Stance, which is a really cool play. And so they break the Toxapex, and if he breaks the land, like Evil Seal, Toxapex is probably gonna die to a Thunder Punch here. I haven't run the Kalk, it might be a roll. Depending on if the Mawas max attack, I assume most Mawas run max attack. And if Snowy gets this play correct, it's gonna be super huge. But um, FLCL does switch out into Landris, and Snowy does just, I think, play it safe and go for Thunder Punch. He does make the prediction, goes for Player of. Really well played, did not see that one coming. <clears throat> I mean, it was kind of obvious, but on the other side, I saw that FLCL. Might wanted to predict him to uh, predict the Landris because the Landris was kind of obvious on the Thunder Punch there. Like, it was just screaming Thunder Punch because it talks the pegs. Like, he was it was just screaming that he wouldn't go for Thunder Punch because he has a Landris in the back, is what I meant to say. But the Landris dies. The thing is, he doesn't really ha need the Landris because 
Besides, other than checking the mobile, Landris wasn't doing much. Like, it pretty much dies to everything. <clears throat> like, it loses to everything one on one, unless it has Supersonic Sky Strike, it could be the Tangrowth, but other than that, like. <laughs> this was still a fine sec, I think, for Avalos. Yeah, he can go and bring out. Depending on if he specs Greninja, he can bring out a Greninja here. Other than that, what, what other plays could he have even done? If he was a fast Magina with a Z move, he could have gone into that. <coughs> Jirachi wasn't really a play unless he had substitute to try and outplay the Sucker Punch. But yeah, um, this if it specs Greninja Hydro Pump, depending on the more it's but if the more is like 160 HP, it's a roll, it's like a mid roll. And if the more is like more offensive and only has 40 HP, it is, is a guaranteed Oko from specs Greninja. And I think Snowy has some HP investment. He does stay in here and Everseal does get the potential roll, picks up the Mauler and his Greninja gets off the battle bond form. Uh, this was a huge turn if Snowy switched out into Tango was there. He could have gotten a lot of momentum back in his favor. Like he, he pretty much would have been in such a good position. Like he, he just killed the Landris which was a good play on his part with the prediction but if he get this play correct too he would have been in such a favorable position. I think he had the game pretty much. But um, Everseal getting off the Ash from there's a potential game changer here. As um, even the Tangos can't check it any more reliable because Dark Pulse does around like 40 ish. So he does just, just um, need some chip damage on the Tangos and it's not a switching anymore to Greninja. And with Stealth Rock, you just need a little bit of chip damage. It shouldn't be too hard to get for others there. I assume he had some HP on his Mawal and he was hoping that he could live. Because otherwise, he wouldn't stay in there. Maybe he had like a lot of HP and the world was in his favor. But yeah, he can bring out his Tangle or his Rotom here. Because it's obviously Specs. He can also go out into Ladi. Of course, he makes the one play that I, that I didn't mention. But yeah, this is confirmed Specs. Otherwise, it couldn't kill the Mawa with a pump. And he's um, either going to go into Jirachi or into Magirna. I, I assume this is going to be Z move Magirna. Because it's like. I think it's the only potential Z move unless it's Z Happy Hour Jirachi on this team. It's a really interesting, like, save like balance team. Um, so. You can either fire off the Draco Meteor or you can also double switch into. If you break the Jirachi, you can double switch into Rotom Fire for Will Always. But we will see what happens here. Let's go out into Magirna. As Snowy wants to default, get rid of the rocks. Which is a really good play, actually. I don't know why I didn't mention that. Yeah, that play, that play makes a lot of sense. I feel bad now. Because Apple TL Stealth Rocker is already dead. I mean, it was pretty much risk-free because if the Greninja goes for Hydro Pump again, predicting Defog. Yeah, you take some damage with your Ladi, but he can't kill you, and you can switch out on the next turn anyway. So yeah, the Majuna does get a free switch in here, so I could see this Majuna going for Shift Gear. Or some sort of setup move. As like, Bulby Majuna is really common at the moment. Why am I lagging? The Ladi is the switch out in the Mew, and we see Majuna go for Shift Gear first. And usually this Mew would beat him, right? Usually this Mew would beat Majuna one on one. But we'll see what happens here. Majuna does show Call Mind, which is pretty scary as Snowy does go for Rooster, a softball. He was scouting for a Z move, wanted to waste the Z move. But the Call Mind makes this really scary because he ever the can just Call Mind again here. Call Mind up enough so he can Oko the Mew with a Z move. As well as was gonna get some chip damage, but the Willow was um, the, the burn nerf this gen is really huge for his Majuna as if I see, I can either attack or call mine again here, as he does call mine again. And AV Tangos, we'll see if it can take a hit. On this plus 3 Majuna, as I see him does 5 Bajillion. Tangos barely takes it and should go for Earthquake here. Does get a crit, which is a bit unfortunate for FLCL. As this Majuna could have put in a lot of work. But Snowy's pretty much forced out to um, save his Tangos. Like, he has to switch out. This is one of his only Greninja checks and he has to get like region a few times to get it out of um, Dark Pulse range. Or even to be able, if he gets a lot of region he can even switch into Dark Pulse. But yeah, I assume that he might go for like a different move like T-Bolt or Z-Move here break in the Rotom. Because the Rotom on the Ice Beam is kind of obvious, right? Oh, he can go into Ladius also. This is um, a really cool play on Snowy's part because this Ladius is Choice Garf. And the burn will bring this Magina in super low and like Psyshock obviously kills. Like he just had to get this in on a move that was an Ice Beam or Flurken. I assume the 
Yeah, the, the entire moveset is already revealed. F just forget that I said Florican. You build Command, you build Shift, you build T Bolt, you build Ice Beam. So Ladius is gonna go. I assume for Psyshock here because he cannot play around with the Majuna, it's a big threat. And this confirms pretty much that it's um, Choice Gav Ladi if he outspeeds the Majuna. But FLCL does play it safe, switch out into Raji, save the Majuna as Fodder, which is definitely smart. And yeah, I'm still not sure if this Jirachi Scarf or Z move. Um, it didn't come out yet, right? And yeah, if it's Scarf Jirachi, he can go for U turn here. If it's Z move, I don't know if it's it's probably too early to set up because the Rotom is at 100%. And the fact that he shows U turn makes me think that he could be Scarf Jirachi with a potential healing wish. So he can potentially healing wish his Majuna late game or his. Depending on how the game will go, and we will see what he will healing wish later on. If he just U turn out into Sableye and this is a free recover for. FLCL. If the Sableye is with death, it will be able to take on the Nido King. It's pretty much a big pain for Snowy. Like this, just looks uh, good for FLCL now. I don't even know why he went into Scarf Ladi because he can just go for Protect Scarf. What did Ladi looks himself into as he does go for Draco. He can go into Jirachi here or for Recover with the Sableye. So maybe he fist of Sableye because he didn't want to take the Draco to the face. Not 100% sure about that, but the Jirachi does take 36%, which um, if, if it's Scarf Jirachi, uh, Scarf Ladius, which it uh, has to be, then that means that this is offensive Jirachi. Yeah, it's obviously confirmed choice Scarf. We already talked about this, and he's just going to use it out again here, as the Ladi has no business staying in, and this gives him a free switch into Sableye again. And he can click Will O Wisp here. The thing is, he has to be a bit careful. I think he's probably gonna click Knock Off because if he clicks Will O Wisp when the Mew comes out, he's gonna get burned on his Sable Eye because of the synchronized ability. Like, I assume he's gonna go in the Mew exactly to try and like burn the Sable Eye, but he makes a smart play, goes for Knock Off. And FLCL plays is really smart. I think he will never let the Sable Eye get burned on the Mew and switches out pretty in the Will O Wisp. But Snowy does go on the Ladios. Catching onto that, already knowing that FLC doesn't want to let the Sable get burned because Sable does just puts in so much work, basically, walls the entire team if he plays it well. I mean, Toxapex should be able to live any one hit. The only thing Toxapex has to fear is like the trick, but I don't know if you would want to trick the Scarf away if you Snowy because this is one of your ways of checking the Ash Greninja. So the Scarf has been pretty nice to keep. As I can see, the Toxapex is just going for Scald or throwing out a Toxic predicting the Rotom slash Tangros. As he does switch out back in the Jirachi, not wanting to uh, risk Psyshock potentially critting or not. Also, this display covered all options. It covered the trick because it would have gone Choice Scarf, would have gone traded with Choice Scarf, and it covered the Psyshock. So, this was actually really smart on FLCL's part. But Snowy also making the really smart tank was play to get more regenerator. As I assume he's gonna go out and do Rotom here to get this back healthy, and the U turn is gonna come out. And I assume the Sable is gonna be coming in here. This is just pretty always um, pretty basic plays. And Sable is gonna go for recover or knock off here. Uh, recover is pretty much the best play if you want the Sableye to be healthy to keep on Nido King Ladio, like to take them on. And yeah, like I said earlier, he doesn't want to go for Will Wisp. I assume he's gonna go hard into Ash Green Ninja or into his Toxapexy. He does go on a Toxapex and break the um, Will O Wisp or on the softball that works. As he does switch out, he anticipating a Toxic or something along those lines. As he does break that immaculately, he can go for Earth Power here. And he does get an unfortunate crit. I will run the calc real quick if that mattered. Yeah, if the Toxapex is fist dev, it is only at 18% chance to Oko the Toxapex. So that, that probably mattered. If the Toxapex just had a little bit more speed dev than the standard set, then it couldn't Oko ever. And the Toxapex would have gone for like a Scald, but it shouldn't matter too much in the long run, because ever CL Sable I just pretty much walled Snowy's entire team. Maybe it will come down to PP Wars. Um, or if the Nidoking can, can like, crit through the Sable, we will see. As I assume he's gonna go for knockoff, he's trying to knock off the life orb from the Nido King so he can wall it easier with his um, Sableye, but he's obviously gonna switch out into Mew. He already lost his item, so this knockoff doesn't do much damage. FLCL, I can see him going into Greninja here, breaking the Will O Wisp, because he's obviously gonna try to burn the Sableye eventually, as he does get that correct. And this is really scary, because I think that the Tangros. It got regen back, but it should be around 70 something. I don't remember 100%, but it should be in range to die from three dark pulses. Ash Green is just an absolute beast. Like, don't play around with this one. After it gets off the form. So I think Snowy has to pick his fodder here. Like, 
it has to be like road on Nido King or something along those lines. I think he's gonna sack off the Nido King. Go sacks off the Larios, which is interesting. I mean, I can understand why he would sack the Larios because, like, you pretty much get it doesn't break through Sableye either, and like you have to pick a forder and Nido King has like a little bit of a higher chance to put in some work like let's say the let's say if the ash couldn't just lock in the dark pools let me call if the nido king can live there i mean nido king, nido king has a, is a role it's a role a little bit in snowy's favor it's like a mid role and nido king can live a dark pool from full <coughs> but yeah honestly ladios would just give if it locks in the wrong move, it would just give FLCL too much momentum. So I can understand why Snowy stacked it off. I don't know. This was like <laughs> this part of the narration was not that good of my on my end. Sorry, guys. Um, so he's gonna stack off the lot here, and he can. He knows he's locked into dark pools. So the Tangus can out can come out here. It's obviously healthy enough to live one dark pools. Yeah, it's a 74. So it would get to it. Go I can't switch him, but he can come in hard on it, and he's gonna go for Giga Drain and knockoff. The Giga Drain will get his health back and he's gonna switch out into Mew here, try to um, predict the Will O Wisp. As I think Everseal will just spam knockoff or recover because yeah, he, he doesn't wanna let this get burned. And if he has like Ice Beam, he can try to freeze the Sableye. He goes for it and gets the freeze first turn, which is a bit annoying for Everseal. So Snowy does see his out and the potential Ice Beam freeze. But like I said earlier, this Jirachi could be Healing Wish, so it's not that bad for Everseal. I assume he's gonna go for U turn or Trick here. He does go for U-turn, which is smart, knowing that FLCL wouldn't let the Mew potentially get tricked and crippled. And he can bring out his Greninja here and click Dark Bolt. This is such a fucking threat. Like he Rodan obviously dies from 61. If it's like if he knows he knows the spread by now from the U-turn damage, I assume it's more of a fist of Rodan. It only took 16% from Jirachi's U-turn. Like it has at least some, it has a little bit of speed death probably, but it's more fist death orientated. As time was what at full can can eat this up. Did I say he would get a kill with this? Did I say he would get a kill with this Greninja? The Tangus was obviously healthy enough, but the problem is now the Tangus took the necessary damage. Like after Regenerator, it's at like... It can barely come in on Greninja next time. Like he just needs a little bit of chip and Tangus can't come in anymore on Greninja. And so I think he's gonna go for Giga Drain here to try to get his Tangus health up or he's gonna go into Nido King to try and get a kill. But yeah, just going on Nido King and you can click off power here, but I felt Zeal says no pulls a double switch into Greninja. Damn, that was a risky play, I feel. I mean it's it's pretty obvious that Snowy wanted to get regenerated with his Tangrowth, but if you just click Giga Drain there. If you just click Giga Drain there because the Sable was frozen. That was a little bit risky on FLCL's part, but on the other hand it was pretty like I can understand the play because he wanted to get the Nido King in on the Frozen Sableye, he would have pretty much gotten a kill, so FLCL's play makes still sense. I mean, he could have sacked off his Majuna anyway, if, if if he didn't make that double. But I guess he wanted to play it aggressive, and now Dark Pulse is really threatening, and this is a roll on Nido King, like I calked. And Snowy might also hope that he goes for Hydro Home and he can dodge, he will see what happens. He does go for Dark Pulse, and he does get the roll, Nido King just dies. And he can go on a Tangrowth here. But it's looking super bad for Snowy because the healing wish in the back from the Jirachi. He can like heal either the Sableye back or the Majuna. Probably the Sableye, because the Sable just pretty much wins at this point. Like the Majuna is still checked by the Tangrowth. As he lets this get really low, but this is smart by FLC because the Tangros wasted some PP. Now he sacks it to Majuna. Tangros already wasted some Giga Drain PP. Can go for healing wishy with Jirachi into this Mega Sableye. And yeah. Jabba is back at full and the pain begins. He can click knockoff here on the Mew or he can double switch into um, Greninja, but he doesn't want to double switch in Greninja. That was unnecessary risky. Knockoff was a non risk free play because you either get some chip damage on the Mew or you get rid of the Assault Vest. Getting rid of the Assault Vest is pretty nice for Greninja. Because now um, Dark Pulse should do like a lot of damage, like 70 to Tangos now without the AV. As I assume he's gonna just knock off again, he breaked in the Mew to come out. He does just do that, I'm just gonna go for Softball here. 
And he goes hard on Greninja, predicting the soft bolt. And now he pretty much gets a kill. So he has to sack the Rotom. Autumn Mew. As he does sack the Rotom. And yes, game is over. He has to go into Tangrowth here, but that's just a free switch into Sableye for FLCL. Now, I kind of like this game, even though it's like fat Sableye balance. This is interesting. Like, not a team you would expect usually. Like, I haven't really seen any sort of. Like, any teams like this much, this matter. But yeah, Sableye's just gonna spam knockoff here. Just try to PP stall it goes in the tangles. He's gonna probably go back either Giga Drain or go back on the Mew and predict the knockoff. Kinda trying to PP stall a little bit here and there, but it shouldn't matter too much. Knockoff has a lot of PP. But yeah, you can see what Snowy's doing. He's switching back and forth and eventually FLC is just gonna bring out the Greninja on the uh, Mew, but it obviously doesn't work out on this turn. Because the Tangles came in and he can Oko it, so he has to go back into Sableye here. But he doesn't lose anything, because the, the burn was nerfed, so his Greninja is still fine, like, it's not like he's gonna die. And the Tango, if, if the, the Tango runs out of Giga Drain, it can't even do much damage to the Sableye anymore. He's just gonna go for Recover here with the Sableye. Also, if Snowy ever stays in and will always with Tango, is really put down, but I assume FLC is gonna try to kill the Mew first, and then burn the, and burn the Tango after, so that his Sableye doesn't get synchronized burned. Uh, see, so yeah, he's just spamming knockoff here, and this time he tries to get in the Greninja again on the Mew, but it doesn't work out. Snowy's playing to his best, really giving FLCL, like making it at least a little bit hard for FLCL in this end game. Not letting him get the Greninja in on the Mew, because Greninja coming in on the Mew would obviously mean that the game is over. As uh, so yeah, just Mew's gonna soft ball up here. Or go back into Tango as well, that's an interesting play. Predicted the predicted the potential switch into... I see what he predicted there, because the Mew was kind of forced to softball, so he predicted the Greninja to come out and went hard on the Tangos. But now his Mew is getting super low. As I said, he's just gonna knock off spam here. Like I said, doesn't want to risk getting burned by the potential Mew that would come out. Because he lost his Healing Wish earlier already. Like, if he didn't get frozen, he could have kept his Healing Wish and burned the Mew anyway. So this would have been even easier then. But yeah, I feel like this was well played from both players, but FLCL... Hmm. I don't know if FLCL played better or if he had the matchup. After Mora was gone, Sable obviously gave Snowy, gave Snowy a lot of pain, like it was really hard to deal with for Snowy. And yeah, he just goes for knockoff again and he catches the Mew on the switch. And I'm not really sure why he... Let me let me go one turn back. How healthy was the Tangros? The Tangros was at 73. So I can kind of understand why Snowy switches out because you obviously want to get regenerated. Like if this gets too low, it can't take Greninja's Dark Pulse. But yeah, I don't know. The knockoff was kind of obvious there, so I'm not really sure why he went into me on that specific turn. But on the other side, he couldn't have he couldn't have done anything. He couldn't have done anything because if he stayed in and kept getting knocked off, knocked off, knocked off, his tangles would have been too low and he eventually had to switch on to Mew and he would have died to knock off anyway, so yeah, I can't I can't attack him or anything, That wasn't. he couldn't have done anything at this point. And yeah, now the Sabre just clicks will and when this game is over. As they both say GG, turn 70. <laughs> Sabre also misses the Willowist to make this game a little bit longer. But I can't, FLCL is doing well, he won versus updated Canton, now he won versus Snowy and he's 2-0. He's on Team Canada. And I'm actually not sure which, who's the last person in this in this uh, pairing, like in this group with the four people. As, uh, he's just gonna forfeit because there's no point in playing it out. As Sable would just spam knockoff like, and you wouldn't wanna you wouldn't wanna risk the Greninja and go hard into it. I mean he could, but he doesn't have to. Like that's obviously unnecessary play, like it doesn't matter, like the Saber alone wins the game, but like FLCL doesn't have to make any plays, basically what I'm trying to say here at this point. FLCL, I feel like he had kind of matchup, but he also played really well, I feel. And yeah, we will look at the at the pairings uh, for this specific group, if that's incorrect English, my god. God, why can I not talk sometimes? And yeah, you guys can see here, this group is updated, Candle, FLCL, 
Blue bird? I don't know who this guy is. And Snowy. Yeah, I actually don't know who this last guy is. But I think all the games played in this group is uh, Kanto vs. FLCL and FLCL vs. Snowy. And FLCL won both, so it's looking pretty good for him. Thank you guys for watching. I did, they played 4 a.m. my time, so I couldn't catch this game live. I will bring you later on live Duke Vesper vs. Snow. That will be hype. I mean, we'll see if I will get my man Dennis on deck. And thank you guys for watching, and I will have maybe get this money's game later. They played 7 a.m., so I also didn't catch that one live. Might record the replay for that too. And peace out friends, hope you all enjoyed, even though I messed up at like 2 points. <laughs> but it happens, I just woke up, don't be too hard on me, I'm trying to bring you all the World Cup content. And peace friends.